Get ready for the countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. All right, it's time for the Voodoo Chef Podcast, where we will discuss all things voodoo from the Voodoo Studios located right here in beautiful Tampa, Florida. So to all my booties out there, if you're looking for nothing but a good time, this is the place to be. Call your friends, knock on the neighbor's door, and let them know it's time to party like a rock star for the next hour. Join me and my guests and learn to voodoo like we do as we discuss our faves and the voodoo that we use. I'll put our guests on the spot as we ask for their top three and make sure and listen as we discuss some of our favorite war stories from the kitchens we've worked in. Sit back, grab a tall glass of your favorite libation, and enjoy this episode of the Voodoo Chef Podcast. What's going on, booties? Such a cool cool podcast tonight we are going to be doing a jack daniels tasting so for those of you scoring at home make sure you print this out you can print this off of our facebook page uh right where you find the podcast link print out your jack tasting map hit pause right now hit pause you know what let it play let it play right through all that cooking crap that we're getting ready to do and uh just go out Get your Jack Daniels for the tasting. You're going to need to play along. You're going to need old number seven. You don't need a big bottle like me. Just just get the 50 ml. Of course they need it. Everybody needs whiskey. Everybody. You're going to need your Gentleman Jack. I got a little itty bitty single barrel because I drank all mine. You're going to need a single barrel. You're going to need some Tennessee Fire. And then you're going to need Tennessee Honey. So, hit pause, do whatever, Uber it in, I don't know, go down. Yeah, call Drizzly. What go down, grab all your Jack Daniels so you can play along with the tasting tonight. If you're all set to go, check out what we're cooking. Big Eddie C, I'm so excited. we got to get right to it. Check out I'm what stuck. we cooked this week. What's going on, booties? How's everybody doing? Uh, I guess it's time for another halfway hangout because, you know, the table's all set. What's going on? Let's get everybody checking in. Let's throw some thumbs, some likes. Uh, start sharing, tagging, slashing, atting, whatever we do. Let's get it going on. Michael Rickberg, what's going on, homie? Uh, hope everybody's doing amazingly well. It is Wednesday night, and uh, it's time to hang out for a little bit. And, uh, we're going to hang out. Let's uh, start it out right. Our first recipe. Uh, glass pretentious ice cube, squeeze of a lime, and of course some jack. What better way to start a hangout on a Wednesday night, right? Carl Miller, it's official. Silver and Smoke is out and ready to rock and roll. So uh, guys, if you're out there looking for a little Silver and Smoke action, Make sure you hit them up. I don't know what the hell's going on. IFA hit me up. You don't know who IFA is, Iowa Farmers Association. They hit me up today to tell me 12 inches of snow last night. They didn't get their package I sent them. Down here, I'm sweating. We need to get some balance in here. Ty, what's going on, buddy? Check it out. A little bit of Woodford happening tonight. Doing a little double oak apple barbecue sauce. To go on our barbecue trip. Jen, what's going on? Congratulations again. But uh, even more so, I'm looking so forward to March 12th. Big shout out to all my booties out there. We're getting ready to do another Our Hope event. If you are looking to be part of the Our Hope event, hit me up. Hit me direct. Uh, let's get this rocking and rolling. We're looking to feed about 1,200 people. And, uh, you know it's the right thing to do when we're in such a fortunate spot to be able to have the things we have. It's only right to give back and give to others. So uh, if you don't know what our hope, uh, it's our hope that no one goes without. So we're going to be rolling into uh, to Robinson High School. We're going to be rewarding the success of the students, taking care of some people out there who 
who may be struggling a bit and uh, put some hot food in their bellies on March 12th. If you are interested in helping out with that, hit me up direct, PM me, AM me. I don't, I don't know what the things are, but you guys all know how to get a, get a hold of me. Hell, if you search hard enough, you'll find my fucking cell phone number right on the internet. I have no idea how that happened. My daughter tells me it's because I'm stupid and put it there. Back for a drink. All right, let's talk about what we're doing today. Uh, we got a dish called Voodoo Shrimp, and we talked about putting barbecue butter on there, and I think we've made that on here. I know we're serving that at Voodoo Valentine coming up right around the corner on, uh, I think it's February 12th. Tickets are still available, voodoochef.com, uh, Comedy of Johnny B, uh, the Kitchen Killers are coming over from Orlando to provide some amazing music. And uh, they're going to do a streamcast, so you'll be able to be part of that. Just just an amazing night. All around the sick food that falls out of my brain. Uh, Voodoo Fight Creations, Bacon Fat Fries, Voodoo Shrimp, what I was just talking about. Uh, your choice of the badass or the bitch, look it up, it's online. And then, of course, the five food groups for dessert. But the barbecue shrimp we were talking about, we, uh, we use a product called barbecue butter that we make and we put that on the shrimp. Today we're gonna to be making a barbecue shrimp that's a little different. Uh, we're not using the barbecue butter, we are going to use our garlic butter, so uh, we gotta have that out. You know we're gonna season our grill with that if we're not seasoning it with bacon fat. Uh, we're gonna make a little barbecue sauce using our double oak wood fur. Gonna bring a lot of that oaky flavor that we're familiar with uh, in barbecue to the, to the game. And then we're gonna get our shrimp going. Let's go ahead and get our barbecue sauce uh, rocking and rolling. I just, I got my basting pan, nice cast iron little thing here. I'm just going to set it right on the fire. Uh, we're going to let that get hot. Let me just close this up so that gets super duper hot. Uh, while that's getting hot, sorry, I got, uh, you know, it's live here. My dog's peeking through the window wanting to come out and play. And that's just not going to happen. All right, so, uh, Albert, what's going on, buddy boy? Dude, if, uh, guys, if you don't follow Albert Ferreira on Facebook, he puts up some of the funniest, funniest shit. Uh, check him out. Al Albert, you don't have to friend him. Sorry, I just told like 5,000 people to uh, friend you, but uh, you don't have to. But, dude, he puts up some funny stuff. And uh, enjoyed having you on the podcast last week, too, Al. So I uh, hope, hope we get to do that again real soon. All right, Jack Daniels, we're drinking Jack tonight, and uh, let me tell you a little bit about this week's podcast before we get started with food here. Um, this week, you'll be able to uh, enjoy a live tasting, if you will. We're going to be, uh, it's all for fun, man, pointless pop culture trivia, it's pointless. Uh, we're going to be doing a Jack tasting. So if you'd like to participate with us, uh, that podcast will drop on Friday. You're going to need to go out and pick up a few things. You're going to need to pick up some of my favorite uh, beverage in the whole wide world, Jack Daniels. Um, so you're going to need some number seven. You're also going to need some Tennessee honey, some Tennessee fire, some Gentleman Jack, and some single barrel. And we're going to walk through an entire tasting uh, led by an expert uh, on this week's podcast. So make sure you check that out. But make sure make sure to pick up some of those products so you can follow along with us because it's going to be super, super cool. And uh, I'll even make available our tasting map that we're going to be using. We'll put that up on our site so you can download that and follow along on the podcast. Uh, it's going to be a good time. It's Jack Daniels. We all know I can't wait. All right, my, my, my little pan here should be hot. Uh, I just got this thing lit up. We've got no convector plate in there, no convectorator, whatever they call it these days. Look at this habit's got me reaching for my jack. We're going to take a little wood first. We're just going to drop it right into the little cast iron. You know, about half a cup, quarter cup, half a cup. And then I've got some, some apple juice. Now, I keep these around because we use them as mixers. Uh, you know, if you have the big one in your refrigerator, same, same. I don't drink apple juice. 
don't do fruit, but I do put it in my food. Um, so we're going to do this. It's going to add that familiarity to the barbecue, kind of like when we spray our ribs with our, uh, our concoction during that final stage to keep them moist. A lot of people will mix apple juice or apple cider vinegar and a couple other items. So this is going to bring that familiarity. Combined with the double oak, uh, which is a heavy oak flavor, it's going to add a nice little uh, added bonus to our Voodoo Chef Smokehouse Barbecue Sauce. Already smoking, but uh, we're going to get this thing done up right by adding a little bourbon and bringing out some of that apple flavor. And real simple, we're just pouring this into our basting container and we've got it sitting right on our right on our grill here. Let's keep our dirties. Keep our dirties going. And I'm just gonna close this. Let that do its thing. Let it warm up. Oh. Looks like uh Colazzo checking in. Don Claybo, Don, I uh I hope everything's going well with uh everything. And uh we got your quotes. If anybody out there looking to uh, jump on board with Cisco. Uh, you know, we use Cisco for, for just about 90% of everything that we do. Uh, make sure you hit up my boy Don Claybo, Glenn Wiggins, thanks for checking in. Everybody checking in, you know, I appreciate you guys coming in. Make sure you give it a share. Pass it out to all your buddies. Get them involved. Let them know what we're doing here because, remember, everything we do is for the Voodoo Chef Foundation. Glenn Wiggins, you're, you're a prime, prime example of all the good we do. Uh, you know, you came through our program, you're doing amazing things, I'm very proud of you. Uh, kids are wonderful, beautiful, uh, family. Uh, share it out there, let people know what we're doing, the Voodoo Chef Foundation. Everything we do here, a portion of everything we do, supports the foundation, which we share, uh, share the love out there with our community. We follow three pillars, our first pillar is our passion. Our passion in the food service hospitality industry. Getting on here educating people on food. More importantly, supporting our industry. Uh, getting out there, jumping in, letting people know what's going on. I'd love to read all the comments that are coming in. A little too far away. Kyle Tidwell, you know all about the foundation. Uh, we have a scholarship uh, named in your honor, my friend, in your daughter's honor. Uh, and we're very proud to have that. Thank you. Um, but, uh, you know, we our passion is the food service hospitality industry. So we're out there sharing knowledge, sharing what we can do, and, and fighting for our industry. Our second pillar is uh, our future. Our future is through, we support that through our scholarship program. We're educating students, uh, doing what we can do to help them become better at what they do so that they can move on and become successful in our industry. This year we're committed to $100,000 in culinary scholarship. $100,000, that's a lot of jack, folks. Um, but nowhere near enough to help as many people as we'd like to. So jump in and uh, let people know what we do. And then finally, our hope. Our hope that no one goes without. Again, we're going to be at uh, Robinson High School feeding a ton of people on March the 12th. If you are interested in being part of that, uh, sponsoring part of that, hit us up, let us know. We would love to have you out. Daniel Mortar, how are you, buddy? Uh, I think I owe you a cocktail. Uh, Conor McGregor lost. I owe you a beverage, my friend. You were right. I was wrong. Everybody write it down. All right, guys, let's talk about what we're cooking tonight. Enough hanging out. My barbecue sauce is getting hot. We got that just sitting in there. Drinking a little Jack Daniels. Don't forget, this week on the Voodoo Chef podcast, if you want to play along, make sure you go out and you buy yourself the following five products. Number seven, make sure you get you some Jack. That's what it's all about. Tennessee Honey. Tennessee Fire, Gentleman Jack, and Single Barrel Jack Daniels. We're going to be doing a tasting. We'll have it all posted up. When you see the post for the podcast, do not just jump in. Make sure you go out and get your Jack Daniels ready so you can taste right along with us. Right along with us. I have no idea what you wrote, Dan, but I owe you a drink. Dana Kress, what's going on, buddy? Let's do the important stuff here. All right, tonight guys we're making barbecue shrimp, one of my absolute favorites, uh, and I, I did these up in advance, so I'm going to have to talk you through it, but it's not too hard. I didn't think you'd want to see me stand up here and peel shrimp. I think we've all been there, done that. If not, you can definitely Google it. The whole key when you're peeling the shrimp, 
Uh, and I'm using 1620 golf pinks, okay? Beautiful, plump, sweet shrimp, absolutely amazing. When you split the back of the shrimp, the Thomas has checked in. How you doing, folks? Thank you for all your love and support. Cannot wait. I hope I see you at Voodoo Valentine. It's going to be an amazing night. When you split the shrimp, make sure you only split it enough to remove the vein. Do not butterfly the shrimp. We want it just opened enough so that we could slide in, uh, slide out the vein, and then we're actually going to replace it with some prepared horseradish. So we've taken some prepared horseradish and we put it inside a fine mesh strainer and let it set. I let it set for about an hour, hour and a half, and all the liquid just starts dropping out. So we're left with a thick horseradish. We put that in the slit where we remove the vein. And then we wrap it in bacon to help hold it in. And then we put it on these lovely skewers. Now I'm gonna walk around. We're gonna let you take a look at this. All right, here we go. So if you look close, you can see the horseradish that we got stuffed in there. And then we just have them on skewers. The skewer is going to help hold that bacon in place. The bacon is going to help hold the horseradish in place. And the horseradish is going to bring that familiarity, kind of like a shrimp cocktail, that flavor to the game. Guys, bacon's one of the food groups. How can we not have that? And then uh, we're just going to grill it, and then we're going to hit it with our barbecue sauce that's already on the grill. Woodford, quarter to a half cup. Apple juice, same, same. And then a cup and a half to two cups of Voodoo Chef Smokehouse. Yes, you can use whatever barbecue sauce you want. Our recipes are built for the flavor profile of the Voodoo products. Plus, if you're buying the Voodoo, Tommy Sell, another product of our, uh, all the good things we do there. Tommy, thanks for checking in. Uh, all the Voodoo products, portion of everything, go back and support the Voodoo Chef Foundation. Uh, Tommy's writing something about bacon. Uh, bacon is one of the five food groups. Butter, bacon, caffeine, carbs, and bourbon. Uh, we would change that to Tennessee whiskey. It just doesn't roll off the lips as well. So, a couple tidbits here. Uh, did you soak your wood, your skewers in bourbon? Hell no. I'm drinking my bourbon. I soaked them in water. If, uh... If you think you're that awesome where I could soak these in bourbon and soak them in water and you'll be able to taste them and tell me the difference nine times out of ten, I'll start soaking them in bourbon. But I'm going to tell you, I don't believe that, that, that you're that good, that anybody's that good. So we just soak them so that they don't burn, so that they don't get a, catch on fire. Uh, and if we're soaking them in bourbon, we're just increasing the risk that that could happen. So I don't do that. If you want to do that, power to you. I rather drink my bourbon. Cindy Grace, new friend of the family, new booty, thanks for checking in. Uh, wonderful husband, looking forward to doing a lot of good things together. Thanks for checking in. Another thing about this, I've car cooked my bacon. Uh, 300 degree oven, about 20, 20 minutes, 25. Uh, I want to get a little bit of that shrinkage already taken place so it doesn't shrink once I start cooking it. Plus, the shrimp are going to cook fast. And with the cooked shrimp and so the shrimp cooking so fast, I want to make sure my bacon is going to be done at the same time as my shrimp. So I, I part cooked it again, 300 degrees, 20, 25 minutes. We use half the slice of bacon, wrap it up, get it good and ready to go, and we're rocking and rolling. Once they are all made, once they are all prepped, back into the cooler. So by putting them back in the cooler, that bacon is now going to constrict again. And it's going to constrict around the shrimp, helping it hold on to that shrimp better. Once we put it on the grill, all bets are off. Everybody's going to start running around, party's on, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Let's get ready. So, real easy, guys. A little bit of voodoo dust. Remember, hold high to get that even spread. And you could be liberal with voodoo dust. It says dust, but a little fine dust. Uh, is good, but more is always better. Uh, yummy, yummy stuff. Season at my grill here. I got my butter, softened butter. Uh, I do have a grill razor in here just to help me from the drips hitting the coals and firing up. And I have that because I'm working with shrimp. I don't want my shrimp to uh, get hit with hot spots. I want to cook it nice and even. And we're just going to lay these in here, guys. Don't ever reach in your hot grill. You 
All right, here we go. When I said don't ever reach in your hot grill, what I meant was don't ever reach in your hot grill and grab cast iron. All right, guys, check it out. I do this every week. I can't tell you enough. Raw product, cooked product. Just flip your pans around. Just flip your pans around. Do a little wipey wipe. Hey, while those are on, I want to give a shout out to uh, my niece, Caitlin. Uh, she, uh, she was throwing some voodoo love this week. And she was kind of poking, poking a little fun at me. Uh, she has an Instagram page called Greenity underscore. So if you're on the gram, check it out. I don't know what the hell that means. I don't know how to do it. I know I have a page, Voodoo Chef 13. Uh, but it's Greenity underscore. She does a lot of quirky uh, stuff. I, I, I mean, probably because I'm old. I don't know, I'm old. But uh, she was making some falafel the other day. And in, in honor of the, the Buccaneers going to the Super Bowl, here's to you, the Humbre and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In honor of the Super Bowl, since she's from Tampa, she said, I think I should at least wear something representative of Tampa. The only thing she has from Tampa is a Voodoo Chef shirt. And uh, everything she cooks on her page, I think, is vegan. Again, number one, old. Number two, definitely not vegan but uh, she uh, she's throwing some love and she says if anybody watching this you know if you're watching this page asking yourself where's the meat you need to check out my, my uncle the voodoo chef and uh, you're right Caitlin we like meat we like burgers we like steak we like it all butter bacon caffeine carbs and bourbon and uh, thanks for throwing us the love if you're out there guys check out her insta page greenity underscore on Insta, and uh, make sure you tell her Voodoo, Voodoo sent us. And then ask her why the hell she's not putting any of the Voodoo product on that vegan shit she's eating. Because you know, something's got to make it taste good, right? I'm just kidding. I love vegans. I love people. I love eating vegan. I, eat, I live a vegan lifestyle. Um, hey, you guys are rock stars. You do you, let me do me, and we'll all be good. Nobody's bitching that I eat bacon. I'm definitely not going to bitch that you're eating eating cauliflower because I think it's horrible. Uh, so uh, power to you, Caitlin. Keep rocking it out. Greenity underscore guys. Hit her up. Don't forget, share the love with our page. All right, we're talking three to five minutes per side here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I got my brush here. I'm going to butt base these with a little bit of garlic butter. And we're just going to hit them up. Now, when I'm doing my steaks and you're hitting your steaks to keep them moist, Guys, the only thing that's going to keep these shrimp tasting good is not overcooking them. Uh, this is simply to get some of that butter flavor, some of that garlic on there, because that is yummy, yummy goodness. Oh my. Two things I say every week. I wish you guys were here to smell this, and then if you watch the podcast, I always tell Big Eddie C. I wish you were here so that you could taste this. Oh, man, the flavor's coming off of here. Super, super yummy. I am going to go ahead. I want to, I'm going to close that down for a minute. I just keep paying attention to it, ADD. Um, huh? All right, let's talk about uh, Voodoo Valentine. Uh, guys, one of the funniest people I know, Johnny B, is going to be doing a stand-up set. You have got to come check it out. Something's popping in my screen. Oh, it's that. I was like, what the hell's behind me? Alright. you got to come check out Johnny B. Uh, you can find him at Johnny B Comedy on all the pages there. All the social media. Hit him up. Hit the like. Hit the share. If you're following us and watching us right now, you have to know that the Chef Eric Young's page, we are about peaked. We've almost hit that 5,000 mark where uh, 
Facebook is going to tell us no more. So what I need everybody to do is jump over to Eric Young's 13. Just uh, type in Eric Young's 13 in the search bar. You'll see a picture, I think, me stabbing a hamburger with a big old knife. Uh, that burger was actually created by two high school students, uh, Annalise and Mackenzie. They, they, they hooked that up, and uh, we gave them money to go to school because it was that amazing. And we can't do things like that without you guys, so thank you for that. Um, make sure you jump over like that page. We've got to get that page up and running so that we can get as many booties in the game as we can. You should be able to hop over there and see the same thing you see on the uh, Eric Young's page. But uh, we want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to check in, pay attention, and see what we're doing, and help out, and be, be a booty. Uh, and we want to see what you're cooking. So if you're out there replicating any of our dishes, make sure you're sharing them with us. Make sure you're hitting us up. Make sure you're throwing us some likes. Uh, make sure you're tagging us, atting us, slashing us. Whatever you do. I don't know. I'm addicted to TikTok. I don't even know how to fucking talk about TikTok. Um, but uh, hit us up. All right. We got to check our shrimp. I'm, I'm dilly dallying. These are ready to flip here, guys. Guys, three to five minutes. All we really need on the shrimp. And, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Do not overcook your shrimp. Do not overcook your shrimp. Do not overcook your shrimp. For those of you just checking in, we're making a little uh, Voodoo Chef barbecue shrimp. If you remember, we only seasoned one side when they went in. We're going to go ahead and season the other side, hold it nice and high. And then uh, once those go for a hot minute, we're going to go ahead and add some more of that garlic butter. We're making a uh, little barbecue shrimp, Voodoo style. We took our shrimp, we peeled them, we split them lightly down the back and deveined them. Inside that split, we filled it with a little prepared horseradish that was drained. We wrapped it in par-cooked bacon, skewered it, and now we got them on the grill with a little voodoo dust. And uh, we're gonna add a little bit of a, a Woodford barbecue sauce that we add a little applesauce. And we're gonna add a little, uh, little heat to our barbecue sauce here in a minute. Um, we wanna hold off on this. We wanna let that do its thing, get hot, reduce a little bit. Then we're gonna add a little bit of Voodoo Chef Firehouse. Voodoo Chef Firehouse, a lot of people you know, know, they know our sauces, they know our seasonings. They seem to forget about our hot sauces. Voodoo Chef Firehouse is a fire roasted habanero hot sauce. So it, we take our habaneros and we throw them on the grill to get that char smoky flavor without smoking them and drying them. So we get the full habanero flavor, but we also get that char flavor. Kind of like when you grill a pepper and you add it to something like our pimento cheese. Um, so we're going to add this to our hot sauce, which is going to add into our barbecue sauce, which is going to bring a little heat to that game. And because of that, uh, we'll talk about a couple different ways we can serve this dish. So we're going to add that in a hot minute. Yeah, all right, let's do it. I'll forget in a minute. Then I'll start getting all these tags on here. You talked about adding the hot sauce. You never did it. All right, we're just going to add about a tablespoon to this. Remember, you can always add more, you can never take away. Uh, Johnny B was uh, cooking with our incendiary sauce. Uh, we call it sin sauce. Uh, he made a pot of chili, and he took our sin sauce, and he started doing like this. And he added it like it was a firehouse or a crystal, and this is about an eight out of a 10, eight out of 10. So he's adding the hot sauce, and he makes his chili, and then he's eating his chili, and all of a sudden he just gets lit on fire. Sin sauce is a 15 out of 10 when we talk about the heat scale. So he got lit up like nobody's business. Um, you'll have to call him and talk to him about it. Hit him up, ask him about Voodoo Chef Sin Sauce and the number it did on him. It is what we use in our Chicken Bones Challenge, and I'm proud to say we have made two people uh, give back the wings that we gave them. Uh, it is hot, guys. If you want to take the Sin Sauce Challenge, log on to VoodooChef.com, get yourself a bottle, and uh, 
let us see you take a big heaping tablespoon and eat that, that sin sauce and uh, prove that uh, you can take the sin sauce challenge and, and lift the television. I'm here to tell you, I would tell you it's hot. It's not hot. It's fucking hot. And it is. It's fucking hot. It's meant to add a little bit to create the heat in your product. And uh, a lot of people are using this as a hot sauce. They're, they're taking the, the incendiary challenge. I get people sending me videos. Post them on your page and tag me. Let's see the sin sauce challenge. One big heaping tablespoon. Take it down. Let's see how it goes. Glenn Wiggins, let's get you up on that, my man. Right, let's, let's get a little bit of Florida paper towel here. Wow. All right. Going to get a little garlic butter on our shrimp. And real quick, we're going to start switching to our barbecue sauce. These are shaping up real nice, guys. I remember we used to serve these at one of the restaurants I worked at back in the day. And I don't know if you knew this, according to Dane Cook, when someone says back in the day, they're talking about Thursday. So one of the restaurants I worked at back in the day, we served this. And, you know, we would grill the shrimp. And when they were done, when they were hot and cooked through, we'd dump them in a pan of barbecue sauce and take them back to the grill. And, you know, all the sugars in the barbecue sauce would candy up real quick and just create amazing flavors. And that's where I fell in love with it when I had to re recreate it uh, down the road. So we got the voodoo version now. But I'll never forget, if you work in the industry, you know what it's like to get in the weeds. My buddy was working the uh, appetizer station and we got slammed. And he was so in the weeds and he was making barbecue shrimp. And they're supposed to be grilled like we're doing tonight. He was so in the weeds, so behind, he starts dropping them in the deep fry. And guys, there's nothing better than fried food. But you got to keep in mind, if we're throwing these in the deep fryer, all of the uh, horseradish is being lost. It changes the, the texture of the shrimp. The whole shrimp is changed completely when you do it that way. So he's throwing it in the deep fryer, dunking it in the barbecue sauce, and running it out. And uh, we almost got fired that night. No bueno. You want to grill these things, guys. Don't uh, don't take shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts. Shortcuts suck. All right, I'm going to start basting these bad boys with barbecue. Love that oh, first thing I smell is that wood burn. Get a little flip on them. We're gonna base the other side, guys. And you know, when we talk about the Woodford on here and the the uh, apple juice, you can use whatever you want. I hope you know that. Please, please don't think you're locked into what I'm doing. You know, use your flavor profiles, use your likes, use your your flavors. Last week we were at Wicked Oak and we were eating uh, guava barbecue sauce and it was phenomenal. Guava's not my thing, but their sauce was amazing. And uh, you got to give it up to Felix and uh, Derek out there. Just, just amazing, amazing food. The guava barbecue sauce knocked my socks off, but when I come home, not something I'm going to do. I'm going to use the Voodoo flavors and impart my flavor profiles, and I hope you're doing the same. Uh, you know what? I almost grabbed pineapple juice, because that's a reminiscent flavor in my brain that would have brought out some nostalgic moments when I'm eating this. And that's as much a part of food as the flavor and everything else. So keep that in mind when you're doing you. All right. I want to talk about how we're going to plate this. 
you can plate it however you want. I love cabbage. I know I talk about vegetables isn't one of the four food groups, it's not one of the five food groups, but there's something about a, a coleslaw when it's made properly that just knocks my socks off. I like shredded cabbage, I don't like chopped. If you're out there making chopped coleslaw, I'm sure it's fabulous, I'm sure it's amazing. It's not what I prefer. I prefer the shreds. I put the cabbage, I, uh, the red cabbage, I put the carrots. That's what I like. You don't like that, you don't have to put it. You wanna use Napa, use Napa. Um, I'm using just standard cabbage, and we're gonna add a little bit of Voodoo Chef Moho. Our Moho is our sour orange marinade. But guess what, guys? It's gonna add a little bit of flavor to this. It's gonna bring that tartness to the game from the vinegars in there, that sour flavor, and it's gonna create more of that citrus flavor that we have on our shrimp. And I just want to get it nice and wet, but not to where it's going to drip all over my plate. We talk about the, the barbecue shrimp. In my, in my books, uh, my recipe books, and for my recipe books, I'm talking about the kitchen. Um, you know, my kitchens, our caterings. Voodoo, the barbecue shrimp is an appetizer. It's not really a entree. But because of what we're doing tonight, I wanted to plate it like that so you could see we can do whatever we want. So we're just going to take some of this cabbage and lay it in the middle of our plate. And again, it's a moho cabbage. We have that sour orange in there. Wonderful flavor. And it's going to complement that apple juice, but also counteract some of that fat because of the acid. Man, our shrimp's looking amazing. And I tell you, they're almost done. Our grill's running a little cold tonight. I want to get some more barbecue sauce on them and get these done up nice. Wow. Wowzers, guys. All right, let's get these finished. Let's get these bad boys ready to consume. Someone asked me one time, I'm looking at my skewers here, uh, why do you put five shrimp on your skewers? And I got to tell you, I don't know. I don't know. I could put five. I could put seven. But I, what I will tell you is I always put an odd number. And it all goes... This is going to be sad. It all goes back to Mr. Antonini's class in middle school when he told us when you're drawing a rose, he was an art teacher, when you're drawing a rose or you're drawing a portrait, always try to stick with odd numbers because the eyes find it more appealing. When you have even numbers, your eyes want it to look more symmetric, and if it's not symmetric, your eyes start to question the build. So if you keep it odd numbers, it's going to trick your mind and make you believe that it is easier to look at. Whatever, I don't know the mumbo jumbo, but Mr. Antonini in uh, Coleman Middle School, odd numbers are for you, my friend. All right, so we got our coastal on the plate. Uh, if, you, if you know me, love my nachos, uh, I'm just going to lay some some of my chips here, some of my tortilla chips here, my Doritos that for those of you who don't know are a Disneyland creation. We can give them props for this. Uh, they needed something to do with their tortillas, leftover tortillas, and guess what? The creation was Doritos. God bless you guys. Doritos are my jam. All right, so we got a little bit of Dorito. It's, it's my love of nachos. When I'm done eating these shrimp, or even with my shrimp, I'm gonna use these as like a, a trencher to get some of that coleslaw and some of that shrimp and eat it all at once. Uh, I like street food, I like finger food. I don't like fork and knife. Wendy Young's, what's going on? Uh, give your husband a, uh, 
big apology from me. I was texting him uh, frantically and uh, never got back with him because I'm a loser. Uh, all right, so here we go. I just want my shrimp to be perfect, guys. We want to make sure they're ready to rock and roll. Let's give them just a, one more minute on this side. We're just going to take our shrimp. Now, you want to leave them on the skewer? Leave them on the skewer. Do we all know what the problem with that is? Somebody's going to try to eat that damn skewer. So, we're going to slide these off and put them right on our coleslaw. Remember, not a traditional coleslaw. It is simply Voodoo Chef Moho on the cabbage. And that's it. Oh, snap. Live TV. Now, appetizers, we can get by with fewer shrimp. Entrees, we got to make sure this bad boy is loaded down. We want to make sure we have enough shrimp to call it a dinner. Let's slide this bad boy right here. All right. Now, too easy, right? We're going to get a little plate scrape. Now, the shrimp's the star of the show here. But remember, I like my nachos. I'm going to add a little bit of pico right over here. And the pico that I have is a sweet mango. We've added a little bit of mango in there to kind of give it a little sweetness to mellow out from the hot sauce that we put in there. And it's that easy to create a nice little barbecue shrimp plate. If you want, we can always add a little more barbecue sauce. We're just gonna grab our, I don't know if you notice guys, I'm using my tongs for everything. If you're in the kitchen, you know, your tongs are going to become an extension of who you are. I'm using it as a spoon, as my fingers, separating the stuff. And we're just going to add a little bit of barbecue sauce across the top here. Oh my God. That Woodford is popping right now. Popping. I might have to refill my glass with Woodford. All right, so real simple, guys. Nice little easy dish. Now. I told you this is an appetizer in my cookbooks, recipe books at school, work, wherever we go, catering company. This would, we'd line this with a little bit of leaf lettuce, maybe a little rice, and just put our skewer up here like this, a little bit of an angle. But uh, tonight, we're just going to take these and line them up like this, right on the plate and everything. We're going to take our barbecue sauce and get a nice drizzle across this and be ready to rock and roll. Be ready to rock and roll. Let's take a look at both of these. All right, here you go. Here is the barbecue shrimp on the skewers. And then here is your barbecue shrimp with the mojo slaw, a little bit of mango salsa, and chips. So hey, I'm Casey Grillo. I play drums with Queen Drake, and I love Booty Chef. It's amazing stuff. My wife and I cook with it all the time. Thank you, Food and Chef.
right, guys, here we go. We're bringing in Darren Balch, Brown Foreman. He's going to walk us through the tasting, and it's going to be amazing. I hope you got your bottles. I hope you got your tasting map. Darren, what is going on, my friend? Now, what's going on with you? How are you? Happy? Uh, are so stoked. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're pimping this out. We're, we're telling everybody, go to the website, print your tasting map. And if you're just now checking in right now, hit pause. Go to the go to the store, pick up all the flavors, get your tasting map so you can play along. I am so stoked, buddy. This yeah, is yeah. I, I, I was. It was funny. I was thinking earlier today. We really messed up. This is my third time here, and this and we're just now doing this. We should have been doing this all along. <laughs> so hey, I, you know what? It's your third. If time I ever come here, back, we got to be. I've tasting. been doing it all along. <laughs> I know. No, trust me. I always have some jack here, but it, it's much. It's much more fun when we can play along with everybody. Just so you know, I've been doing it all along. And, <laughs> and it looks like the same bottle, but trust me, it's not. So we got a lot of Sorry, people that. coming in today, but I wanted to, to ask a few questions before we get started, if that's okay. So absolutely, we talked about our flavors. We got number seven. We got gentlemen. We got single barrel. We're doing fire and we're doing honey. And those are our tastings today. And you know, for everybody playing along, that's the order we're going in. But, you know, one question I asked you, I said, are we going neat or on the rocks? And you said definitely neat. And we wanted to have a rocks glass, correct? Either rocks, shot, whatever, as long as it's, and some people may not have five of the same thing. So if possible, five separate glasses, obviously, so you don't mix the whiskey. Um, but if need be, then just one every time. Um, I personally have just five different shot glasses per se or whatever. So I'm, I'm gonna pour neat into the glass. Um, and that's just to, to make sure that you get the full instance of the whiskey straight. Um, obviously if, and, and this is basically a sipping format per se, but if somebody wants to, obviously once they pick out their favorite at the end, uh, to turn it into a cocktail at the end, we'll talk about best ways to mix that particular whiskey, uh, each one at the end of uh, the category. Awesome. And and glass, not plastic for optimum taste. Correct. Glass, not plastic. So as long as you have it, it as long as it's in a, some sort of glass vessel, we're good to go. And then, you know, with wine, you know, the glasses are different for each wine. You know, the wine, the white glasses have a smaller nose. Uh, the, the goblets for the red wine have a bigger nose. Now, we all know, I get all kinds of Jack gifts for, for uh, holidays and whatnot. I've gotten glasses like this with my Jack, and I've gotten glasses like this with my Jack. So what mm -hmm. is the ideal for tasting here today? Well, the ideal would be the rocks glass, the first one that you had, or just something small. Um, I, the, the, the glass, the frosted one you have there, that's more of a Collins glass. So obviously that's more of a cocktail, Jack and lemonade or something in there, whereas, your simple rock, smaller glass, then that's just your more sipping whiskey. Today, we're just, it's really just sipping, uh, but naturally, if you want to try these whiskeys straight, you just something that you'd have either some ice or ice cube or a ball in there, and you just pour the whiskey straight. In. Awesome. Well, I, they're, you hear them, they're all, can we get, oh, they're all anxious. They're all hitting me up going, let's <laughs> get this get started. Out. So it sounds like a bell of St. Mary's on my end there. Jeez. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, I just got to thank you for doing this. You know, I, I am a, a lover of the product, the brand. And so, uh, you know, I'm just really super excited. Let's get these guys in here. And, well, you know, we got a whole in. bunch of booties playing along with us today. Awesome. Welcome, booties. So let's bring them all in and we'll do some quick introductions and then we'll get going. So, I'm gonna go around the room one by one here and uh, introduce some folks here. Uh, we got IFA checking in all the way from Iowa, the Iowa Farmers oh, Association. Nice. And uh, you know, we're gonna go ahead and blame them for, for my long career in the restaurant industry because it's uh, IFA that actually got me my first job washing dishes and I've been addicted ever since. We've got Pitmaster and uh, and competitive barbecuers in the room, Derek Wally, Pitmaster, and uh, Bubba Flores, owner of Wicked Barbecue. Uh, Silver and Smoke Barbecue in the room. Carl, do me a favor, take your phone and just rotate it for me there. 
Carl's in uh, the well, there, we there we go. There we go. Uh, Big Green Eggs and Sam, who knows where he's at today? He's not back on the screen yet. And then my PIC, my, uh, my, my, my you know, everybody knows uh, H here. Uh, if it's happening with Voodoo or anything else, he, he's, he's right there with me. Uh, much love. So, uh, Booties, thanks for checking in. And I hope, you, I hope you have your map ready. Derek, I know you sent me your picture like four hours ago. We got yeah. the map. We got <laughs> I've been waiting. Glasses. Clean glass for each tasting, guys, so we don't mix. And, uh, Darren, I'm going to pass it right off to you and let you okay. take over. On awesome. Thank, here. Thanks, Jeff. And then, obviously, thank you to everybody of uh, participating in this. Um, it, it's uh, truly great to be able to sit down. And uh, I was telling Jeff before we jumped on that it's it really odd. <laughs> and the first thing we've been doing is just thinking along and just talking about the whiskeys. And normally when I do these tastings, obviously, I, I tell the Jack story before we even get to this point. I've already done that on the first couple podcasts. So we're just going to jump straight into the whiskeys. And what's kind of cool about the whiskeys here is we have five different whiskeys. They're all going to taste different in their own reasons. And why, we're going to talk about why that is. But they're all old number seven. So there's we're not making the whiskey any different. When we're making it, we're not making Jack Honey or we're not making Gentleman Jack. We're making old number seven. We're making Jack Daniels. And then it's the process of what we do afterwards that changes these whiskeys. So we are, yes, to start, we're, gonna, we're just talking about Jack Black Label, old number seven. That's what we're making. And they're all, that's the base of all of them. They're all the same barrels, um, the same mash bill, make them the same way. They all go in as old number seven. And then what happens to them magically in the barrels and, and what we do at the process afterwards. And we'll talk about those to make those different. So that's kind of cool that we're going to, and, and it really goes for all of Jack, all the whiskeys we have. We have 11 different whiskeys. They're all made the same way, except the one difference is our rise. So the grain bill is a little bit different in our rise, but other than that, same barrels, the same process, same aging um, going into it, uh, thought process. So the thing with whiskey, and, and just to kind of give you a quick um, of what Tennessee whiskey is, is it's basically it's similar to bourbon so I'm, and i'm going to give you a quick update of of what constitute bourbon so there's basically five major rules for bourbon number one has to be made with 51 percent corn so that's the number one rule in bourbon jack daniels if we're talking about it just so we understand what it is jack jack is made with 80 percent corn number two has to be made in the u.s so most people think that bourbon has to be made in Kentucky. That is not by law, that is not correct. By law, it can be made anywhere in the US. Though over 90% of all the bourbon in the, in the US, because the bourbon is a US product, um, is made in Kentucky. And the reason for that is the limestone water. The, the water needs to be iron free, and we have a lot of that in Kentucky, so that's the reason that most of the bourbon is made there. Number three, it has to go into a brand new barrel, and that's a, a, an oak barrel that's been charred, and it has to go into, whether you call it a cask or a barrel, it has to go in there, and they're just one-time use. So whether you're drinking a Woodford Reserve, a Woodford Double Oak, whatever, like the Jack Daniels, we use that whiskey one time in that barrel, and that's it. When we're done with it, we sell that whiskey off to Canadian whiskey, Irish whiskey, Scotch whiskey, uh, tequilas, Tabasco sauce, Home Depot. We sell those barrels off, we can't use them again. So we are the number one, obviously, being a huge um, whiskey maker, we are the number one supplier of barrels, being that we have our own cooperage. So it's a huge uh, process for us, but we, can, but we like it. We control our own barrels there. So we have those three steps. We have 51% corn, we have made in the USA, we have a new barrels. The fourth step is it has to be aged at least four years. So we can, once we put that whiskey in the barrel, it, it cannot be called bourbon until it's aged for four years. Um, and at that point, we can start tasting it and decide if we like it or not. And the last thing, at least, and there's some little technical things, but the, for the main parts of bourbon, the last thing is it goes into the, off the still, it goes into the barrel at 125 and it has to be bottled at 80, 80 proof. And that's bourbon law. So Jack Daniels follows all of that. 
and no coloring can be added. And there's some little other details, but the main thing is that's bourbon law. Jack Daniels follows all of that, but we are not bourbon. And the reason for that is we follow one extra step and it's called the Lincoln County process. So when we talk about those barrels and they're very charred on the inside and that you can use different levels of char, but what that char does for the whiskey is it basically takes out impurities. And think about it as like a, like a Brita water filter in your refrigerator where that's got charcoal in it and it takes out impurities out of that water to make your water cleaner and, and taste better. That's exactly what the charcoal does inside of a barrel for whiskey. So that's why they toast, the, toast and char the barrels because they want those impurities taken out. Well, the Lincoln County process took it to an extra step. Basically, they took that charcoal and basically what they did, did was they took sugar charcoal maple trees, which were prominent in, in the South, and um, they let the wood dry out and they burned it down into charcoal and they would pack the whiskey, I mean, pack the charcoal and pour the whiskey through it. And it would go in per se, like bourbon, it, or back then it wasn't bourbon, it was just whiskey, but it would go through that charcoal filtration process where it would filter through the charcoal and the whiskey would come out a little pure. Jack didn't invent this method. Um, the man who taught with Jack how to make whiskey, Nearest Green didn't um, invent this process. It was just how people made whiskey at that time um, and, and a lot of people got away with it and there was mainly two reasons one it's very costly to do it and b it's time consuming and especially during war times where they needed to get fast whiskey out they just eliminated that step so it, but jack follows that step and that's how jack made whiskey and after jack passed away and Le motlow took over um control of the business and when the motlow family sold it to brown foreman they they if the, the one of the major reasons why is Brown Foreman swore that they would never change the recipe. They would always make whiskey the way his uncle Jack did. So we will always make whiskey that way. We all we always will do that Lincoln County process. We call it charcoal mellowing. So what happens is when it, when Jack Daniels comes off the still, it is a bourbon, um, but we put it through that charcoal mellowing, and when it comes out, we we pack these huge vats. If you've ever been to Jack, you'll you'll see them. They're ten feet packed with sugar charcoal maple and it goes in bourbon and by the time that whiskey goes through all that charcoal and comes out the bottom it is now Tennessee whiskey so it goes in bourbon comes out Tennessee whiskey and let me put it straight into the barrel so that's our process so that's what makes bourbon different than Tennessee whiskey it's just that one extra step in Lynchburg they call it the, the extra blessing um, and what it does for Jack mainly is it takes takes out corn oil. We talk about um, impurities and, and different flavor elements. Um, sometimes that, that corn oil has a, a bit of a funky taste. So that's why Jack does it or what the process of when we do our whiskey. Okay. Ready when you are. Woo! Are we going yet? Yeah. That's my shot of that. Oh, you look great. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, guys. Johnny B. Whoa. All right. 3D. Yeah. Okay. Woo, IMAX. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
to me, it's kind of a, a little bit of a caramel color. It's not super dark. And then what we're gonna, we're gonna nose it and then we're gonna taste it. So when we nose it, there's a couple things that, that I would recommend doing. Number one, smell the back of your hand. That's gonna just clean out your, your senses, bring you back to a neutral. So every time that we go to taste something, we'll smell the back of our hand to bring us to neutral. Um, the second thing is when you, when you hold the glass, hold it just enough where you can get the aromas. Don't put it all the way up to your nose unless you just can't smell very good because so you don't want the alcohol just to get a big alcohol. Well, you want to be able to just smell the whiskey. And number, two, number three is keep your mouth open just a little bit so you can breathe, obviously, and still smell at the same time. But do make sure you do that every time. So when you smell the whiskey, you're smelling it the same every time. So, okay, so everybody, let's uh, take a, a, just a quick smell of the whiskey. Can anybody get any flavors off top of their head? Typically, when I, when I smell Jack, and, and here's the thing, everybody's noses and palates are different, so you guys can pick up something. If I, if I say, hey, I smell caramel, and you're like, I don't smell caramel at all, it's not that you're wrong, it's just, I'm picking up something you don't because all our taste buds and senses are a little bit different. So a little bit with this, I typically um, smell a little bit of caramel and maybe just a hint of banana is kind of what, what I get from, from a smell standpoint. Okay, so now getting into the taste, the, the tasting part of it. And this is a little tricky. We're gonna take a little sip of this and we're gonna swirl it around our tongues just to kind of shock our palate a little bit to be used to the alcohol. And there's a reason why the second and third one always taste better than the first one. <laughs> so <laughs> so and it's kind of get your mouth ready. So try not to judge it. So right now we're just going to take a little bit of sip to get, we're not judging the whiskey. We're just putting a little bit of sip in our mouth and swirling it around just to kind of shock it a little bit. If you need to, obviously have a cracker, a sip of water or something in between. Oh, man. First one tastes great to me. Yeah. Me so. too. <laughs> so now we're going to go back. Now, just obviously, I, I, I got to say this from a standpoint. I should have said at the beginning. We have a motto or philosophy at Jack Daniels. It's, it's live freely, but drink responsibly. So if, if those of you have got the 50-ounce packages or, or playing the home game, but um, we've got around eight and a half ounces of whiskey here. Just let's make sure that um, you're not driving and you're enjoying yourselves. But um, absolutely, right, so let's get into the for, tasting. Thank you point. for throwing so, that out. No, no, all good. So let's taste this one from a tasting standpoint. Can anybody get any flavors out of that? Heaven. Yeah, but heaven's definitely up there. <laughs> I, I personally, I, I kind of tend to get, um, I still get the caramel on this, and I get toasted oak. I definitely get the oak. I'm used to that from smoking. Yeah. <laughs> I get wood. I, I couldn't tell you the difference, but yeah. There, there's yeah a and then typically with Jack, you tend to get, um, especially on the number seven, you get a little bit of vanilla. And that comes directly from it, from American oak wood. The toast, obviously, you're you're going to get that from the char, um, and but you tend to get a lot of that caramel in from from Jack. You tend to, I I'll always seem to get a lot of caramel, especially in when we get a little bit further down the line with like the single barrels. So, so I that's get a lot of seven. People, Does anybody have any questions about old number seven? I get a lot of people that say that they find number seven very smoky. And I don't find this smoky at all. No, I don't. I don't find it. And, and some people will think it like kind of has. And 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 I don't get it. But I I got a a good friend of mine that just he's not a Jack fan, but he's a friend. But he's just not a big Jack fan. And he he's like, oh, it's like he's like, I I taste charcoal when I drink it. And I'm like, it doesn't taste like charcoal. Not at but all. Everybody's. You can't you can't make everybody everybody happy. I was like, we're, I, I always come back, well, it's the number one whiskey in the world, so obviously somebody likes it. So. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Well, yeah. well, it sounds like you need to reevaluate your friends. Part of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so, so let's move on to Gentleman Jack. 
So this is actually in our portfolio. This is our third biggest seller, Gentleman Jack. And and Darren, just to restate, this is the same old number seven. Correct. So what happens with Gentleman Jack is we talked about that charcoal mellowing process where we take that bourbon and we put it through charcoal maple. And, and then after the bottom, we have our Tennessee whiskey, and we throw it into a barrel. Well, we're going to come back to that barrel four or five years later, and we say that whiskey's, that whiskey's ready. So at this point, we, we have no age statement whiskey, though, it, though it's coming. Um, we have no age statement whiskey, um, but we, we go by taste. So, and our tasters will know when that whiskey's ready to be bought. So how do I get that job? Until at least four years. Once we know that whiskey is ready to be tasted, we do for Gentleman Jack, what we do is we do a, we do a second time of charcoal mellowing or the Lincoln County process. So this time we take old number seven, we take this product, we run it through charcoal again. But the first time we do 10 feet, this time we only do three feet. So we take the old number seven product, we run it through another three feet of charcoal. And so it goes in Jack Daniels, it comes out Gentleman Jack. So the, the whiskey is the exact same, it's just the process is a little different. And what it does, what it changes, what the charcoal does for Gentleman Jacks, it makes it a little bit lighter. Obviously when, when you try Gentleman Jack, it's gonna be a little bit easier of a sip in whiskey, it's gonna be a little lighter. I wouldn't say it's a beginner whiskey, but if somebody doesn't like that heavy oak char or something from, from old number seven, I recommend Gentleman Jack. It's a, a lot of women like Gentleman Jack. I like Gentleman Jack, especially during the summertime, if it's just with some lemonade or just in a light cocktail. So this doesn't look, smell as sweet. The Gentleman Jack compared to the regular Jack Daniels product, the, old, the Gentleman Jack is definitely lighter. So, and that's what you're going to get with Gentleman Jack. It's going to be a little, little bit. You're going to get some of that the bite uh, taken out of it. This doesn't taste as sweet. It doesn't to me, and it and it is a lot. It's not. A, it it's just goes down real easy. Yes. So does anything get anything in the nose? I mean, that's different from old number seven on the nose. It's definitely lighter to the nose. I don't get the banana that you were talking about the first time. Yeah. So to me, with this, if anything, you may get a just a hint of citrus. Um, but not, but not banana, just more citrus, like orangey type citrus. And then, um, it's all, it's almost a little floral. Yeah. And then tasting it. God, that's just so easy to me. Not biased, but I mean, that's just uh, that's just such an easy drinking whiskey. It's like it just goes down to me very smooth. Um, and then people talk about just going back. I, I know we we probably talked we probably should have talked about cocktails. Obviously, the old number seven. Obviously, Jack and Coke. It's an American staple. A lot of people also um, drink Jack and Ginger. Very very popular. Um, a Lynchburg lemonade where you add uh, lemonade and triple is a great cocktail. Uh, but obviously, people are old number seven is no, no for Jack and Coke. Gentleman Jack, again, um, anything from on the rocks, some similar combinations. It's just a lighter style whiskey, but you can make an old fashioned with it. Um, but I like it personally with ginger or lemonade um, or just on the rocks, just sipping it neatly. So, but pretty, pretty, pretty solid whiskey to me. Any questions about Gentleman Jack? Mm. Uh, what percentage of barrels do they turn into Gentleman Jack? Um, well, obviously it's growing now because Gentleman Jacks do it like Jack Daniels per se, um, a normal non-COVID because it's kind of a crazy year. Um, we, we're typically pre-COVID, we were growing around 3% a year. This year we're really trending more of a flat um, because of COVID. Um, we have that on-premise bar business and it, it's a little bit slower internationally than than it has been in years past. Um, but Gentleman Jack's the opposite. Gentleman Jack, we're growing premium whiskeys 
some of Jack thrown at about 20% growth rate right now. Wow. So hurting more old number seven in the gentleman Jack uh, currently than we have in your staff. So, okay, Jack single barrel. Old number seven, it's just one barrel. So the difference is the old number seven and gentleman Jack both, those are typically blends of around 150 barrels that will take barrels from the top of our barrel house, the middle of our barrel house, and the bottom of the barrel houses, and mingle those together. And the main reason we do that is to be able to get a consistent taste. Um, people know what Jack Daniels tastes like, and they, we want it to taste the same every time. And not every single barrel is gonna taste the same way. So um, with the old number seven, it's very important. People know what they like. So it doesn't matter whether you're in Tampa, Florida, New York, London, Tokyo, they sell, Jack Daniels is in 170 countries. And we need to make sure that it, no matter where you are, that that Jack Daniels tastes the same or whatever part of the world you are. So that's why we do that. Single barrel is a little different. Single barrel, we go to the top of the barrel houses, pick the barrels that get the most heat. So when that heat uh, hits those barrels, you know heat rises, just like the attic of the house or whatever. So when that heat gets into the barrels, the whiskey, the, the pores of that wood open up and that whiskey seeps into the wood. When it gets cold, it contracts back into the barrel. But we have great seasons in Tennessee. So that whiskey goes in and out. 100% of the color comes from that barrel. About 60% of the flavor of this whiskey comes from that barrel. So the barrel is very, very, very important. Um, the other difference with single barrel is typically we start tasting uh, Old Number 7 and Gentleman Jack at four years, whereas a single barrel product, we typically start tasting at around five years. So it does get at least another year, maybe two years, aging longer than a Gentleman you know, a Jack or a Gentleman Jack would. So it does get a little bit of aging process. If you look at the whiskey itself, especially against Old Number 7 or Gentleman, the whiskey is darker. And that's because of that extra aging that it gets in the barrel. The other difference with single barrel is uh, Jack and Gentleman Jack are 80 proof. Single barrel is 94. So you're getting a higher proof whiskey. And, and the one thing, like we're not directly looking for, as I said, single barrel is not always going to be the same. Um, so if you find one you really like, typically on, on, a, on a regular 750 liter or, or liter bottle of, um, of single barrel, it'll have a barrel number on there. So if you find one you really like and God's like, God, I really love that barrel, go back to that store and get another bottle of that number on it because you'll probably never find a barrel that tastes exactly like that one again because it's, it's truly a, a once in a lifetime product. So normally from our barrels, about one out of every hundred barrels becomes a single barrel. And then out of those, not every barrel from the top becomes a single barrel. So it's really about one out of every um, hundred of those that becomes a single barrel. So in reality, it's about one in a th every thousand barrels of Jack becomes a single barrel. So it's pretty low percentage. And when the tasters are tasting the whiskey, they're not looking, they're not saying, hey, I want this to be really oaky, or I want this to be um, really fruit forward, or I want this to be really smooth. They just want it to be something. Um, that's the one cool thing with single barrels. They want it to be distinctive. And as long as it has something in there, then they're, that's a single barrel. So, because, and you could try, we could pull three different barrels, um, and they all taste a little different, and you're going to like one of them for sure. If you were to buy your own barrel, we, we did the Voodoo Chef barrel and you guys split it up. We'd pull three samples and you guys would taste and you guys would pick out whatever one. You, and there would definitely be one that would really stand out because I've done it a zillion times and there's always one that just, and, and sometimes it's just personal preference, but they do taste a little bit different. So let's go ahead and smell this one. You know, smelling this one, D, I got a lot more of that banana flavor you were talking about out of, out of the one that, I'm, that I opened. Yeah. And and it's a lot. It's so smooth. Yes, yeah, so to me this this definitely has a, a bigger smell or robust smell or it still has that caramel. Um definitely oak. I get I definitely get the oak on this one. And and for this one I, 
I didn't get it on the first smell, but on the second smell, I got alcohol. So <laughs> that comes in where the, the, the higher proof comes in, where that was the first time I really kind of had that burn a little bit. Um, and that's what the higher proof. So, all right, let's try, let's try some single barrel. Eddie C, what do you think? You, you're my beer guy, and uh, you're drinking whiskeys tonight. What do you think? It's from a beer guy's perspective, that one you've got some similarity, but there's just a little bit of a finesse. It's almost like a focus where somebody's taken the light beam and just really shown it in on like the essential flavor. I, I can't describe it any other way. I mean, it, it's just a, to me personally, like. I like this probably like cast drink, um, and I like it with a cold beer. I like this, the cast drink, barrel proof, with a, on an ice cube, let the ice bring the proof down a little bit from 130 down to around this 100 range, and, and a cold beer next to it. And that's, that's my little secret. You and I were talking about that uh, this past weekend that uh, we shared. Yeah, you know, exactly. And, <laughs> and, and just, my just little, for the, my, my little secret. <laughs> for the record, all you booties out there. Yeah. yeah. We won't mention it. But yeah. he drinks the same beer I drink. Yeah. Boy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I had one this we're, weekend. We're not, we're not plugging that company today. No, we're not. No. I had um, one this weekend that's one of the strongest ones made in the area. Uh, it's called 44 Magnum by Lagerhouse, and it's 22%. Fantastic. That stuff yeah. burns a lot like this, not in a bad way, but yeah. a lot of refinement to that, made by yeah. a, a German brewmaster. And... This is similar in that way where there's just this focus to it and there's not a whole ton of flavors going all over the place, which isn't a bad thing. It's just different. And this one, it's like they just dialed into the essence of whiskey and it's just a, a, just a bullet, man. It's right there. Yeah. How much fluctuation is there in single barrel? Like I've had a couple different kinds over the years. Yeah. And some of them have had way high so our, our so our regular single barrel like so the, the regular base product is always going to be 94 we're going to add water to it to bring down water to 94. um our other pro our cast drink product is going to be whatever comes out of the barrel at and it's it'll be anywhere between 120 it can be as low as it'll be a minimum 125 um as high as 140. the sweet spot i would say probably 85% of them are right around that 130 to 150 range. Um, but I have seen the highest I've ever seen is 137. Um, if, but it's it just, to me, that's almost, I, I like, I really appreciate the whiskey, but it does give a little bit of that extra burn when you're drinking 140 proof whiskey, basically straight or whatever. So I, I tend to like putting that on an ice cube and just bringing the proof down a little bit. But that's the true essence of what our whiskey is. It does have the best flavors when you're when you're just drinking that whiskey. The the first time I had the um, the barrel proof whiskey, I, I was honestly scared. I, I I had flashbacks to as a teenager, and we stole a bottle of 151 out of somebody's parents' uh, cabinet, and we did a shot of 151, and I thought my esophagus was gonna be blown up, and I was like, like chugging milk and throwing up the rest of the night. And I was, I was just like scared. I'm like, I don't like 100, 440 proof whiskey. I had like flashbacks to chugging a 151 as a kid. And uh, when I drank it, my, my first thoughts were like, wow, that has a little burn, which it did. It was 140 proof whiskey. But then the finish was so creamy and smooth. I was like, wow, that's so good. Can I have another? <laughs> so, it was uh, kind of a. I know that feeling. I did yeah, the same it was kind thing. of like it just. I I kind of it was it was kind of a shock, but then I kind of like fell in love with it immediately. I was like, this is just so good that just it just became my jam at that point. So, no. but, but you drink different. you You're, drink a lot of barrel tasty single barrel that has like this one to me definitely has, it's it's definitely bolder. This one has some spice to it, um, and has a little bit of oak and I. I Sometimes you're going to get some that don't, that are more creamy and vanilla and smooth or whatever. Single barrels tend to, to vary a little bit. That's why there's only um, a 
approximately about 240 their their exact same way as this one right here so the next one you have may taste a little different not that they're they're better worse whatever it's just, just they're just different it came from that one barrel you can't replicate it so and that's the same with the cast strength too every cast strength correct. is going to be correct. different unless you get in the same barrel correct yeah, and you'll never get the exact same. And the reason for that is even though it goes in as old number seven, and the mash bill is the same and the barrel producer is the same or whatever, that's, that barrel has uh, 32 staves in it. We don't know where that wood comes from. It could come, there might be 10 staves from North Carolina, 10 from Indiana. We don't know the climate of that year, the year the tree was cut down. There's a lot of factors that factor in to because the wood has such a we can have two barrels even if we could replicate the barrels to be exactly and we can put two barrels side by side in the barrel house with the exact same cloned barrel and they would probably still taste a little bit differently based on how the sunlight came in or how it just moved around or we could take this whiskey and taste it and then come back six months later and this whiskey will taste totally different based on the time that it sat in that barrel. The barrel's gonna change, the time it sits there is gonna change the flavor. And we don't know that this barrel, if it aged for five years or aged for six years, or the barrel right beside it that might be the next single barrel, maybe only aged or for um, six, and, six years and two months or whatever, just they're all different. So you're gonna get different flavor profiles, even though the whiskey technically is the same. I don't know what this barrel is, but it's amazing. Well, cheers to everybody, by the way. Hey, you know what? Cheers to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for making it to the Super Bowl. Yeah, hell yeah. Go Bucks. Hold on. Hold on. I got to get something just because you said that. Hold on. Hey, while Darren's getting that, I wanted to show everybody before we started the little uh, little podcast today, I, I took like out my magic this. eight ball. This is oh, my what do you got? Buccaneers. Oh, look at that. My Jack Daniels Buccaneer statue. That is very cool. So, anyway. I was showing everybody my magic eight ball, uh, Dave. <laughs> there you go. So, so uh, you know, everybody knows that, that I, what I like to drink. So Darren got me a magic eight ball where when I don't know what I want to drink, all I got to do is shake it up and turn it upside down. And look, tonight it says Jack Daniels. There so, you go. Uh, Ironically, it says that every time I do it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, moving on. Any questions more about single barrel? Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Miss Ruby Red Monroe, all the way from San Francisco, California. Don't forget, you should check out the Blue Chef Dirt. See, I think it's both models. Voodoo Chef's Dirt is an amazing product. I use it all the time in my kitchen. But also, the fun fact about this product is that a portion of the proceeds go to culinary scholarships, which is really amazing. So if you can, go out, check us out online. Voodoo Chef. Find it at a store near you. Mwah. See you soon. Bye. Another argument against Seems that when I express myself, I've slipped the wrong words. You know I hate to see tears fall down your face. When this happens, baby, love is just a All right, so we're going to move into the flavors. And not that I would ever talk bad. Hi, Lizanne. Um, it, but in theory, our probably master distillers probably aren't thrilled with making flavored whiskey. <laughs> they are truly whiskey makers. Um, but they serve a purpose in our portfolio. Very nice. Um, there's a couple of reasons why. Obviously, we have shareholders and we got to make money. And but the main thing of why we got into the flavor business was to attract the younger drinker to it. So we know that if we can get that, the 21 year old kid that was out drinking a lot of fireball, um, we want to get them to drink in Jack Daniels. Cause we know at some point that 21 year old is going to stop doing shots of Jack fire. And hopefully now that he's into the, into the brand, 
that in three or four years, he's going to jump to regular Jack and then hopefully jump on Jack and single barrel and, and try experimenting. But he's into the category and we get him with this. So that's kind of why it's here, but it is great whiskey. So it's still old number seven. So we're going to pour a little bit of the cinnamon whiskey. To me, typically we're drinking this neat today, but typically with both the, the fire and the honey, I, I just keep a bottle in the freezer. And, and um, I tend to do the fire more as a shot, but you can drink it with apple juice. We talked about with beers, it goes great with an angry orchard or cider beer. Um, that's what they're seven up, those soda, any of those type of things. But um, if you mix the fire and honey together, it's called the beasting. But the, so what we do here is we take the old number seven product. Oh, we man. Make, we have a proprietary um, liqueur. We make a cinnamon liqueur that's made with real cinnamon. And we actually blend the cinnamon liqueur into in with the old number seven and create uh, Jack Daniels Tennessee Fire. And people will ask me, what's the difference between um, fire and fireball? And this is made with old number seven, true whiskey, whereas the other brand um, is not. <laughs> and, and there's been different things that used to be Dr. McGillicuddy's at one time. And they basically, there was a marketing genius that kind of changed everything. And uh, he, he made a lot of money for himself and for the company, for sure. But this is true whiskey. When you drink this, this tastes like whiskey. It tastes like it's going to have a Jack Daniels uh, taste to it, whereas Fireball to me is very, I don't want to like bash it and say cough, cough syrupy, but it's very syrupy. It's thick. There's a lot of sugar in it, whereas this, there's not. So anyway, from the nose standpoint, it, it is what it like. Obviously, it, it's a lot of cinnamon. <laughs> it's it smells like dentine gum. The backside, you can tell, you can get there's whiskey in there. So on the nose, I get cinnamon and I get a little bit of Jack and not much else. From a from yeah, dentine bubble gum. Cheers, yeah. From a, a taste standpoint, I get red hot candy. Ooh, it absolutely. is absolutely red hot. Exactly what it's like. All, all Jack Daniels. And uh it kind of warms me up almost. I feel like so kind of like Christmas Eve and whatever. <laughs> To me, it's a great shot. Um, it is a little bit lower proof. They're 70 proof. Um, but it's it just like, it's just easy drink. Like, I, I don't know who, like, and I've done a zillion um, side by sides with, with the other brand in this one and converting people are saying, hey, you got to try this. And for sure, nine out of ten drink this. And like, oh my God, that's so much better. Now, obviously, there's a premium price to be paid. Uh, not as expensive as the other brand. Um, it's not as well known as the other brand from a, just the call standpoint, but the quality's in the bottle. This is a great, great sip. Great shop brand. Um, and I love it. I've, I've always got a cold, cold bottle in my freezer. Hey, always. I think it tastes Everything. like big red chewing gum. I, Absolutely. That's Jared, what I was going to say. Well, that's what I was going to say. It was like this, like, I don't know how old everybody else is here, but this reminds me of big red. Yeah, it tastes like all the way. And I, I think I think uh, uh, the red cream soda would, would be killer in this. Yeah. Uh, so please, obviously, share any recipes you got. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I, I wanted to say this is more like a drink and not a novelty. No, absolutely. Like this isn't just a flash in the pan. Obviously, we're not. Um, we, we we we're not always the first, but when we do it, we do it with quality. Um, we were not first uh, to come out with a honey liqueur um, or honey whiskey. American Honey uh, from Wild Turkey was out before us, um, but we really took over the category. When we released Honey, it kind of took off, took off on its own. And right now, it is our, outside of old number seven, it's our number two uh, skew of what we sell. We sell as, um, as much, we sell more Tennessee Honey than we do Gentleman Jack or Single Barrel or whatever. It's crazy the wow. amount of honey we sell. Um, then Gentleman Jack falls in, and um, so it by far is the leader really? of the honey category. Fireball still sells, outsells Jack Fire by quite a bit, um, but we're still number two in that category. So we're, we're, we have the number one honey, we have the number two um, 
uh, fire whiskey. So that's, I mean, it's pretty impressive overall. It's, it, and obviously a lot of uh, Jack Daniels carries its name with that, which kind of, mm -hmm. but the qualities mm -hmm. in the products, but the right. products <laughs> wouldn't be, it wouldn't hang or have the longevity uh, right. of being, having the liquid in the bottle. Oh. And, uh, I mean, they're just great, great whiskeys, and I and I hope people love them. And I and I think as people, um, hopefully, younger people that get into the category have, have learned to love those, and 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 people that like me and old timer that have learned to appreciate them, and um, still don't mind doing. I'm 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 not big on going out and doing fifty shots in the night anymore. I don't do that anymore. But I do. We'll sit around at the house and watch a lightning game, or some nights we'll say, hey. If, Every time the Lightning score, let's do a shot or something like that. Or every time the Bucks score a touchdown, let's do a shot of Jack Fire. Um, that happens more often than not. So. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Darren, you were – we were hanging out on the podcast and, and enjoying Jack Daniels. Um, and you had your honey over ice cream. I think this yeah. would be phenomenal over I, vanilla I, ice yeah, cream. Yeah, no, I, or I, 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 I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> added to a Coke float. Yeah. And uh, so, so if you, if, you, if you go to uh, Bush Gardens or Sea World, so either park, they have Jack Fire in a frozen cherry Coke. Um, <laughs> actually, and you can get there or, or pina colada. You can get Jack Fire in a pina colada or a, 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 a cherry Coke at Bush Gardens cherry or Sea World. Be great. So if you, if you happen to go to the parks, please go over and find the frozen drink section because there's a. Uh, you can enjoy some either regular Jack and Coke or Jack Fire, Jack Honey, and Pina Colada, or, um, Cherry Coke concoction, or whatever, and, and they are delicious. <laughs> Derek, you're going crazy. What's up, homie? <laughs> are you just high fiving? Um, how do we get our hands on one of these machines and that recipe? <laughs> 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 You got to talk Bubba into installing one over at Wicked Oak, yeah, right? And, we, and we got we got to get one of these. Wicked Oak. I I, I think right? I, for for the time being, let's just let let's dig up a blender somewhere, and I, I think you need to have a part to, experiment to, who can come up with the best uh, the, the exact best re recipe of it. So. But Darren, if we talk them into getting it at Wicked Oak, you and I have to go over there and get some of the burn yes. on Friday and yes. try it. <laughs> I, I think we, we we need to have a live podcast from this house. <laughs> I like your idea, Darren, of us all trying to come up with the best recipe and meeting back together to see what yes, was Yes, exactly. So, all right. So, lastly, we're on to the Tennessee honey. As uh, Chef was talking, the last time, obviously, I had this over, over ice cream. It's a great way to, and I know we talked a little bit about it last time, but again, here we're just talking about the old number seven base products. So, the Tennessee honey, to me on the nose, yeah, I definitely get the honey. Mm. Maybe just a little bit of kind of um, like, I, I mean, I'm not sure if it's probably more molasses than maple, oh. but um, a little bit of molasses. And then a little bit of um, nut, but I can't pick out what kind of nut it is. It just reminds me it's a little nutty. And I don't know if it's a hazel or chestnut. Hold on. Can't tell. Now, I'm smelling more more of the, like a maple syrup. Yeah. 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 Are they using a clover honey in that? To be honest, they're using a Tennessee honey, but I don't know what um, what actual, like, if, if they have a name for the honey or whatever. I don't know that. They do mix it, a little bit of honey and molasses liqueur. Um, there's no maple syrup in there, but it does, it gets that. Um, molasses, yeah. When we taste it, to me, I, I always get a little bit of almost butterscotch in the, or, or, or kind of like that molasses maple that um, Chef was talking about. So let's take a sip. You know, it smells completely different smelling it from the bottle and smelling it in the full, full air. Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, and the reason we're doing this, obviously, neat and not obviously, if you put it in the freezer, it'll kind of take out some of that as well. But it just, it's a great shot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and honestly, even like with this in the wintertime, I know we don't get a 
a lot of cold weather here in Florida, but um, any of these whiskeys, like the honey or e even the old number seven, is great for a hot toddy just with some tea. Oh, hot toddy. <laughs> you know, Darren, I don't know if you know this. Honey is one of the things that I just do not care to eat at all. But yep. this drinks so amazingly well. Yep. Look at H's face because he knows I won't even buy honey for the for the inventory. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I totally agree with what you just said, and I was going to comment. I don't care for honey, and I was apprehensive on tasting this. This, this is pretty good. So, it drinks so amazingly well. Yeah, and, and you kind of get that like across. I mean, you still taste the Tennessee whiskey. But you definitely, to me, it kind of reminds me of a bit of honey candy bar. Um, and if, if you do mix this with like a rum chata liquor, it, it makes like a, a honey nut Cheerios style shot. So it, it's same thing with the with the fire. If you mix the fire with a rum chata or horchata, it, it makes basically like a cinnamon toast crunch shot. So you can get kind of a little fun if you just want to experiment, have a little house party. But okay, so we ran through five whiskeys. Um, thank you for letting me talk for. I don't know how long I've been talking, almost an hour, seeming that way. <laughs> but, so, um, I, I'm, curi good. I'm curious to see whose favorite was what. IFA, give us some feedback. What was your favorite taste tonight? Gentleman Jack. We, we like the Gentleman Jack and the honey. The honey I'm saving for my coffee in the morning. Oh, my That's God. That's amazing. I am, too. Yeah. Educational in the morning? didn't hear that. <laughs> In the morning? <laughs> Educational the morning. guru, you didn't hear that. <laughs> That's my boss, by the way. Hey, there's a meme out there, Kermit the Frog in there, and he's drink he's drinking, and he says, he's like, hey, good thing at work, you can drink iced tea, and he's like, another good Jack Daniels looks like iced tea, so. That, really good. <laughs> that saved me a couple times, buddy. I won't tell you anything. We'll leave the stories of that. Uh, Fire. Uh, you've been, you've been kind of quiet tonight. What'd you think, man? Uh, I'm not, I mean, I'm usually not a big Jack fan. Um, that fire, I could drink that all day. That stuff's really good. I know, you told me, you told me the other day what you were drinking and I, I went out your back door and I came back in your front door with samples of Jack and said, we're going to make a switch, buddy. I need you on the podcast. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I will say this, and it's always tough for people that aren't naturally whiskey drinkers to drink straight whiskey. The other one. Yeah. If that's you, I thank you for uh, sitting here doing that because it's not the easiest thing to do. Um, but the, minus the single barrel or maybe the shots, I mean the fire or the honey from the Jack or Gentleman Jack, you're not typically 99% of the time not going to drink it straight. Most of the time you're mixing it with a cocktail, yeah. Jack and Coke, Jack and Ginger, lemonade, yeah. whatever it is. And, and the whiskeys will totally change of how smooth of the profile mixing it in with a cocktail. So it's, it is a little yeah. uh, drinking. Them straight. But more, these are the whiskeys in its truest form. So uh, again, thank you guys so much for uh, partaking. And, and I hope there's some people that the jump in later and, and print out their uh, tasting mat and, and enjoy this later. I gotta say this much though. Yeah. I, when I was young, I wanted nothing to do with Jack Daniels. I don't, I don't think when you're 19, you can appreciate it. So all I tasted back then was like the, like a burnt nature, like a charcoal, but fair disclosure. When I was that age, my favorite thing to eat was fucking SpaghettiOs with crumbled up nacho cheese Doritos. Hell so, yeah. Uh, look, now we're too old for that shit. Low rent. That's what I had for dinner tonight, Ed. I, I don't doubt that. No, you had the ravioli. That's what. <laughs> Low rent behavior. Shame on you. Well, you know what? On behalf of everybody here, Darren, I got to tell you thank you for walking us through this. I know. Thank you. Oh, oh, Carl. Carl wants to say something. Carl, you got to unmute yourself, buddy. You got to hit on, hit on <laughs> the space bar down. I know you're tired because you just opened a restaurant today, brand new, uh, Silver and Smoke, official today, open. But uh, you got to unmute awesome. yourself so we can talk to you. Or I'm moving on. Can you, you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, you can hear me. Now. There you go. 
I had yeah. no idea it was on mute. I sucked that bad. I muted okay. everybody so we could hear hear uh, Darren talk. Okay, so two things. A gentleman Jack and a good cigar is a fabulous night. Um, yeah. Jack Fire, uh, cinnamon pecans, candy, Ooh. and Jack Fire yeah. coming your way. Nice. 100%. Yeah. Um, but you didn't mention a beautiful, a beautiful for for smoking pork <clears throat> would be Jack Apple. Yeah, that'll be another podcast. Obviously, we don't. Obviously, there's only so much time. We're under time constraints. <laughs> oh, okay. I was just Five like, would be a good number. But Jack has eleven skews, and I mentioned the show. I was like, we missed out for for not doing this every time. So any time that I come back or in the future, we will always be trying something. And I'll try to make sure that he has samples to be able to give to everybody. Well, you, just so you know, this now became officially the Jack Daniels podcast. So what yeah. are we drinking next week? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Everybody make sure you come off mute because, uh, you know, we got to thank Darren for coming out tonight, supplying all the tastings. Uh, here's to you, my friend. Uh, we all know how I feel about old number seven. It is my dream. And, and honestly, we appreciate the love. And thank you to everybody taking the time out of your busy days and schedules. Um, it's still a crazy time out there. God bless everybody. Uh, go Bucks. Don't get too comfortable, Dave. Don't let's say bring, good night. Let's bring the Super Bowl back to Tampa. Don't say good night. You're acting like you're saying good night. It's time no, I'm, for not, little... I'm not saying good night. I'm just saying a toast to everybody. It... What's up, everybody? This is WWE Superstar Titus O'Neil. I'm here with my man, Chef Eric Young, longtime friend, so much of a friend that he met me at my bank, one of my banks, Bank of America, to come and drop me off some good products that I'm going to, I'm, I'm, man, I'm about to get loose on this grill tomorrow when I have all these people over to my house. But you all, all can do the same thing. Go to VoodooChef.com and get your products. You've got everything on there from marinades to barbecue sauce to rub to all kinds of stuff. Shrimp, chicken, pork, beef, vegetarian, it don't matter. Just get on there and make it splatter. Voodoo.com, VoodooChef.com. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Learned I've a lot. been a, a Jack Daniels drinker for years, like Chef. Uh, and I've never a fire drinker because we need to drop shit. So I have to turn around and now I can just spin around. Yeah, Finish it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what I learned tonight from you, and I actually saved a little bit, so if anybody else yeah, has. Yeah. The fire and honey mixed together, the bee sting, is phenomenal. Oh, oh, oh yeah. So it's, a, it's a mix of fire and honey together. There you go. It, yeah. it was hard to not drink all the fire in the first shot because it is so good. <laughs> oh, my God. I was surprised how oil. good that was. Yeah, I tried the bee sting, too. But I also tried the, the fire with some cherry coke. Talking that mixed in. How's I that? I keep a bottle of Everybody fire. Everybody on my screen, you touch that ball. How the fuck did it make it? Well... Isn't there a way to, if since there's a Jack Daniels barbecue sauce, how about folding in that fire and honey into that? Yeah, but. Well, uh, no way, I didn't catch that ball. But, but, I, the honey, for sure. The honey is definitely really in a lot of barbecue recipes. Um, I can see that. Oh, so, yeah, so, obviously, uh, you, you guys are the guy. We, maybe we need to come up with some type of uh, competition somewhere where we have a. Uh, a Jack Daniels barbecue cook off of some sort. That's you have no idea. Jack Daniels flavors incorporated in every oh, day. Actually, oh, we have no you, idea. You set it up. You know what? You know I'll be involved. I use so, the wood uh, chips a lot. You know we. Well, I, I, will, uh, I will say this: like, so Jack Daniels has a big barbecue competition that's one of the best in the country. It's uh, typically held um, it, for a long, long time. It was always held the last Saturday of October. It was moved up. To the first week of Saturday of October this year was actually postponed for the first time in 40 years or whatever it was. But um, if you guys ever make it up there for that, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it was a pretty big market. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we've been cooking. Uh, we do the halfway hangout every Wednesday right before we record the podcast. And this month, yeah, I saw been, you. I, I saw it briefly this afternoon. Yeah, we've been cooking with Woodford all week, all month. Yeah. 
Um, maybe we need. I, I, I talked about a Jack on the table with the double oak today, so because I, I was drinking that. Yeah, <laughs> I was drinking the Jack and cooking with the double oak. Yeah. Um, but uh, maybe we need to have a whole month dedicated to Jack. Yeah. So you, you tell me, we'll set it up. Um, obviously, uh, we we thank you guys for the support, and um, it, it obviously we'd love to be involved in, in especially if it involves the community somehow. Um, we're all about it. Well, we appreciate that love. And uh, if everybody's ready, let's play a little round of uh, pointless pop culture trivia. So everybody, everybody's got rule number one taken care of. You must have a cocktail. And rule number two, you cannot cheat. As always, Big Eddie C is the keeper of pointless pop culture trivia. Liz Gator, Paul. Gator, Gator, Paul. Gator, Paul. Gator, Paul. Gator, Paul. He came prepared. All right, so let's make sure everybody's not muted. Uh, IFA, are you off of mute? Yeah, who keeps muting me? What do you? We keep you muting like everybody because of the background noise. Uh, Bubba, are you off? Ready to roll. H? I'm good. Sam's on his journey. Sam? Tried to get away from the background noise. Suzanne? All right, and then we got Carl and Derek. Ready? Uh, We're all right, ready. So, so as always, uh, IFA is cheating. They're playing as a tandem today. Uh, if you know wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? I'm the farmer. This is my banker. That's how I get to buy a new tractor every year. We're good to go. Boys and taxes. We're good to go. All right, so uh, as always, if you know the answer, simply shout out your name. And the winner of tonight's Pointless Pop Culture Trivia as always, we'll have their name entered into a drawing where they may or may not be selected the winner of a prize to be named at a later date. So if you are all ready, here we go. Question number one. Stop that. <laughs> the tomato meter is a rating system on what popular movie yeah. or TV website? Yeah. I have a... They get to see who's in first. Darren. IFA. IFA's in first. I'm going to say, yeah. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes it is. Derek Woolley obviously doesn't know the rules, and you better watch out. He is a member of the Bray Wyatt clan. Uh, as always, Big Eddie C is the <laughs> keeper of uh, pop culture trivia, and he we can only go based on what he hears or does not hear. There, there must be a time delay here. Well, I have an hour forever. behind us, and they were chosen first. So I don't know. Yeah. Check to the face. Question Time travel, two. dude. Time travel. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. Which annual horse race is held in Louisville, Kentucky, is known Carl. as the run? Dell, Dell, Dell. Big Eddie C. Carl was the first one to bark out. Kentucky Derby, sir. The Kentucky Derby is correct. Yeah. yeah. That was question number two of the 679 questions tonight. Question number three. What is the 10th word in the happy birthday song? <laughs> IFA. 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 IFA's in, I think Eddie C. IFA's says. in. Birthday. Birthday it is, says the banker, and he is correct. H just gave up right away on that. Be your tagline when you join by yourself. <laughs> IFA had to recruit the banker to become a, a force hey. in the game here. Hey, hey, Eric, Eric. Yes, sir. So, so if Scott does trivia next week on his own, he'll be known as the banker. That's a okay. <laughs> That's a okay. Only Ed knows the answer. It's to the IFA. Answer. What are you doing? It's IFA. Only Ed will know the answer to the next one. Uh, Sam, just so you know, it's a history question. So if you don't get it, uh, now we know why you're uh, over at uh, selling grills and not teaching anymore. <laughs> question number four. With the shortest administration in history, what U.S. president served for only Sam. one month? Sam. Sam. Lenny Harrison. That is correct, my friend. Laying claim to your uh, certificate as a history teacher. Congratulations. <laughs> Caught pneumonia during his spe inauguration speech. Jesus. I got a lot of jokes. I'm going to let him go because of the political. It was the Thursday. 
It was a Thursday. <laughs> <That's my day>. <laughs> <laughs> Question number five. If a performer is an EGOT winner, an EGOT winner, they have won an Emmy, a Grammy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a what? Carl. Down. Beginning C says Carl's in. Tony. Tony who? <laughs> You're correct. They have won a Tony, my friend. They have won a Tony. Big Eddie C, I think we need a score update. That way Carl, I can drink more Jack Daniels. Carl and IFA have two, and Sam has one. And Darren has five because we did five tastings tonight. Yeah. <laughs> First is six. All right. Question number six. In the novel... Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, the Cheshire Cat is known for having an unusually large what? Carl. Tail. Carl. Carl. Carl's in. Tail. Tail is incorrect. Lizanne. Lizanne. Smile. Smile. We, a big ADC? That counts. Smile. We will accept it. The, correct, the answer is grin. Oh. Same shit. Different day. Lizanne, you're on the board with one, and if everybody wants to see something funny, watch how excited she gets. According Is she going to get to ask a question? What's that? <laughs> Is she going to get to ask a question? No, not tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's an, that's an inside joke that we'll keep inside. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. According... To a book written by Harry Wong, what is the proper way to attract <laughs> attention from students in a classroom? Are you kidding? Yeah, I'm kidding. I made that shit up. All right, yeah. question number seven. <laughs> no, wait, wait. Question hey, number seven. Only only a couple people in the room get that. Go Google it. Question yeah, number seven. It's not the right way. It's the long way. There you go. <laughs> the wrong way. Oh, Often God. caused during car accidents. What W word is common for neck injury? Bubba. Sam. What was the question? Sam. Big Eddie C. I think I heard Bubba in first. Yeah, yeah. that's who it was. Bubba. Oh, is not hearing me at all? It is whiplash. whiplash. The answer is whiplash. Uh, what the fuck? Try <laughs> <laughs> no, that. Whiplash. whiplash. Not a different W word. Yeah. A different <laughs> w word. So Big Eddie C, give us a score update. Uh, our, our friend uh, Darren has five. Yes, I have a V by his name. Uh, IFA and Carl have two. Sam, Bubba, and Lizanne have one. You're you guys need to check your speakers over there. Here we go. Question number eight. Question number eight. If you got Rick rolled, you have been pranked into listening a song by what Rick? Darren. Carl. Darren. Rick Ashley. Rick Ashley is the correct answer. Damn. Yeah. Ricardo. <laughs> I would have had no clue. I would have had to say something. Never going to let me know. That's about all I know. Little stranger to love. Be that he sees Do it again. Do it again. I thought it was Ricky Ricardo. <laughs> Question number nine. That's the nice Charlotte thing. Danielson rubric. <laughs> Just fucking with you, Lizanne. Charlie. Question number nine. In the U.S. Senate, how many senators represent each state? Sam. I think that was Sam. Oh, Wait. come on. Two per state. I, I, Two per state. I, I file a grievance here. <laughs> now, you sound, now you sound like Sam, and that's why he gave it to Sam, not you. So... Uh, Sam would have bitched for years had he not got <laughs> oh, so tape. Check the tape. Derek, Derek, still, Derek still heard from question number one. I stopped playing a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just so you know, uh, I worked for the Buccaneers, I think, for three seasons. Big Eddie C., how many did you work for the Buccaneers? Um, I did... All are part of 20. 20 Whoa. years. 
Uh, it may or may not have something to do with that jersey you have on, D. I'm just going to – Yeah, gonna exactly. So it's not your business. <laughs> do you have the hat on too? Yeah, yeah. baby. Oh, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, all right, here we go. Hey, boo me all you want. We won. Bubba, this aggression will not stand, man. <laughs> nah. He just put on he just got put on administrative leave. <laughs> Bravo. Who's who's gonna do all the smoking then, huh? <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Question <laughs> number yes. ten. That's so right. On the cooking competition Top Chef. Host Padma Lakshmi tells consist tells contestants to pack up their what and go. Carl. Derek. Carl. Knives. Pack up their knives and go. Big Eddie C, I think we may need an update on scores. Carl's oh, got three. Oh. Carl has three. Sam and I have two. Bubba and, and Lizanne have one. Darren has six. So. I was going to say, and even though What's, I called, even though I called I, for an official score, wasn't even paying attention because I needed to pour some more. And I do better when I'm drinking. We know Just Darren's second. winning, so. Yeah. I think we're all winning because of Darren. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I had no more ice. All right, question number 11. What is the American name for the pen and paper game known in the UK as Knots and Crosses? Lizanne. Hey, Lizanne. Tic-tac-toe. Tic Tac Toe is correct. Excellent uh, answer. She's on the board. No, I've got two. Did well, I mention that H and I are going to be late tomorrow? <laughs> I'll take over. <laughs> his boss is in as well. Did, did you hear IFA? His what? boss is on the call. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, which which eggs, one is eggs, that? Eggs Benedict on the campus. Damn straight, and and yes, she is. And if you notice, she had five. See, I can figure it out from that. From that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was actually question number twelve, so a point for oh, IFA. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget, just just take care of her coffee in the morning. My tea. <laughs> it's my my iced tea. Tea. Yeah. Iced tea. Jack you can put, a, you can put a honey in there. Yeah. Yep. Some icy tea with some honey. There you, go. there you go. All jokes, guys. That would never happen at work. That'll make the day so much better. <laughs> All right, question. Big Eddie C. Oh, you told the scores. I just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Darren's winning. Boring. All right, question number two. <laughs> if you find yourself in Hawkins, Indiana in 1983, you're probably in the middle of what horror show? Carl. Derek. Carl. Halloween. Derek. Halloween? Incorrect, Carl. Derek. Derek. Rocky Horror. Rocky Horror is incorrect. Oh. Emily Bill. Oh, We're in Indiana, Emilyville, New York. How many of you had to drink? Is it time to cut a voodoo promo? IFA step next answer. IFA. <laughs> no, yeah, that's what they just gave. Oh, uh, that was, family gets I it. I thought that was a like subliminal clue. If you're in Hawkins, Indiana, in 1983, you're probably in the middle of what Netflix horror show? Oh, Netflix. And I'm going to use oh. horror very loosely. Netflix. What I should say is stupid ass <laughs> kitty show. I know. IFA. Eddie C. Are they in? Yeah, give, give him a shot. I, just, uh, go ahead. I don't want to hang um, 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> like in the alternate universe of the show right now. You, you said, you this is kind of strange how you think you know the answer. <laughs> what are which project? Be oh. specific. It's kind of strange <laughs> how you think you know the Earl. answer. Bubba. Bubba. Damn. Damn. Stranger Things? Stranger oh Things is the answer. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm no 
Stranger Things. You never watch that? That was the <laughs> that was the worst clue I could throw up on that. Go watch that. Have a drink. Keep your criticism to yourself down there. <laughs> that was a very kiddie show. My eight year old loves it. Hey, uh, Darren, it's your fault that we've totally lost this, yeah. just so you know. <laughs> hey. And I wouldn't have our, anyway. If our wives were playing, we would have won. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they, cause they know everything. It is recorded. I love. <laughs> Damn, I'm glad I'm single. <laughs> there now, my, what you my wife watches the podcast and yells at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Big Eddie. See, we need a score count because Chef, the last question. Chef, I, I think you need, you need to edit that for the promo of the for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you even worry. <laughs> when it, we'll talk tomorrow. <laughs> so this podcast will look like no other. <laughs> so Carl has three. Bubba, IFA, Sam and Lizanne have two. And Darren has six. <laughs> so, so theoretically, Carl's winning? Theoretically, yes. In actuality, Carl's winning, but you're saying, but Carl, we're telling everybody else, we're saying there's a chance. That's right. Question number 13. Yeah, Jim's the guest host. Taste it or toss it. What should you normally do with a poo poo platter? Sam. Taste it. Sam. Taste it. Taste it is correct. Big Eddie C, do we have a tie? We do. Uh, no. Darren still has <laughs> six, but Sam and Carl have three. Well, I think Darren, Darren's going to concede five of his points. Okay. And I think we need to have a tiebreaker. And and uh, we just happen to have a tiebreaker question. Oh, goody. <laughs> I just got to think of what it is. Question your question. How many different barrels Wait, are you no, no, in oh, the no, single no. barrel? No, 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 no. One in a thousand. Makes corn. corn makes whiskey. According to Luke hey, Bryan, whiskey makes his Damn. women. Frisky. Sam, Frisky. Big Eddie C, I gotta say no to that. That's incorrect. Okay. Pretty. Carl. Whiskey. Yeah. 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 My packaging station. Carl, if you don't know the answer, I'm gonna give it to Sam. Uh, 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 Randy, corn makes whiskey. Whiskey makes my women feel a little. Say it, Sammy, and you win. Feel a little frisky. And the winner of tonight's pointless pop culture trivia, Darren Balch. Darren, thank you so much for providing all the flavors for tonight's tasting. Your name will be entered into a drawing where you may or may not be selected the winner of a prize, but will be named at a later date, my friend. Hey, buddy. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Who's excusing me? Darren, you're a rock star, man. As always, thank you so much. Thank Here's you everybody, everybody for coming in to thank the you, uh, thank you. Until next time, guys, we'll check you soon. There you have it, booties. Another episode of the Voodoo Chef podcast. Let's give a big shout out to everyone involved with Voodoo Chef and all things voodoo, starting with Wustoff Knives, the official knife of the Voodoo Chef. And jamming up and down the streets of all Ybor City and Tampa Bay, ragged old souls. Thanks for letting me jam with you guys. And when those amps are cranking, the turntables are definitely spinning, thanks to the official DJ of the Voodoo Chef, DJ Don Pablo. Check him out spinning all across town, most importantly, at all Voodoo Chef events. Speaking of events, getting ready for yours, check out Voodoo Chef Catering. 
custom created events for every shape and size. Log on to VoodooChefCatering.com to get your information today. A great big shout out to all my booties that are in the Voodoo crew. Thank you for your support. And of course, we could not do what we do in the crew without all of our crew sponsors. First Watch, Chef Shane Shibley, thank you for believing in our mission. And of course, we can't forget Voodoo Mortgage. For all your mortgage needs, check them out at VoodooMortgage.com. Alessi Bakery, a Tampa staple. Drop in and check them out today. And our newest sponsor, Twisted South Food Truck. Chef Adam Jessup, thank you for what you do. And of course, all things voodoo are in support of the Voodoo Chef Foundation, providing culinary scholarship and feeding those in need. To find out more information or make a donation yourself, log on to VoodooChefFoundation.com today.